Okay, so let us begin this lecture. So in the last few lectures, we discussed the one point compactification. of a non-compact and locally compact topological space. So let us say, let me make a remark on what happens when x is compact. So if x is compact, So, in the results we proved we are assumed that x is not compact, but x is locally compact. Uh, so, but what happens when f x, x is compact? So, if x is compact, then x is also locally compact. This is because of silly reasons as for each x in x, we can take the open set u to be x. Right. So, remember the definition of a locally compact topological space. We need that, that every point small x in our space should have a neighborhood u such that the closure of u is compact. So, if we take u to be x in this case, since u closure is then going to be x and x is compact, so this will do the job. So, yeah. so a compact topological space is obviously locally compact and uh, if you consider the one point compactification. of x. So, then, so we construct the one point compactification in the same way. So, our x hat is going to be x x disjoint union one more point p naught and the topology is given in the same way that we did that we did in the non compact case and we can easily check that and it is easily checked. that this point p naught will be an open and closed subset right so uh, uh, so if our x is for instance the sphere right uh, which we know is compact because it is closed and bounded inside R 3. So, then x hat will simply be the sphere disjoint union a point away from this. Yeah. So, uh, so, the conclusion is that we have this inclusion of x into x hat, then i of x is not dense in uh, x hat. So, in any case, we wanted to compactify things so that we get a compact space. Uh, and so, if our space is already compact, so then yeah, it is not very interesting. So, this is just a remark. Uh, so, in the previous lecture, we proved the following. So, okay, so let me just make this p naught over here. Yeah, p naught is going to be this point. So, uh, so we had proved the following two results. A let x is everything okay? Yeah, okay. The first result we proved is uh, let x be uh, non compact and locally compact topological space.
then there exists a host of and compact topological space x hat and an inclusion i from x to x hat uh, such that the following four things happened x hat is simply i of x disjoint union one more point p naught i is continuous i of x is open in x hat and 4 i of x is dense in x hat right so if x is already compact so then everything else will happen only the fourth condition will fail and another uh, result we had proved is the uniqueness of the one point compactification so uh, let t so let me just correct this So in the yeah, so I had in the previous lecture where we proved this result B, I had said that X has to be compact, but that's not necessary. So let T be a host of space. Okay. So I just want to correct this. So in the previous lecture. I had stated this to be compact okay so compactness compactness is not required we only need t to be a host of space okay so assume that there is a continuous map j from x to t such that j of x is an open subset of T and this map X uh, J from X to J of X uh, it's bijective and is a homeomorphism right so then we considered the following map f from t to the one point compactification of x. So, x is a non compact and locally compact topological space. So, x we have j over here and we have x hat this is our i and we are going to define f as follows. So, the picture we had made was the following. So, we took this open disk and let us say we put it into this closed disk this j right. uh, and let us say I take an equator over here so this is the one point compactification this is our additional point p naught this is i so this equator is going to look like something like this right all the points at infinity all these boundary points like everything towards the boundary is going to get collapsed uh, to p naught right so um, as we move further and further away as we move towards the boundary of this are x out x so all those points are going to co get collapsed to p naught okay so we define the map f as follows right if t is in j of x right so then uh, define f of t to be equal to i of j inverse t this makes sense because j is a bijection from x to j of x so if t is in j of x then there is a unique j inverse t and uh, i can just apply we can just apply i to it okay and if t does not belong to j of x 
then define f of t to be equal to p naught okay and the assertion of our proposition was then f is continuous okay so let us see some applications of this proposition so this proposition we have proved in the previous lecture so as an application so let us prove that the one point compactification is unique right so uh, what do we mean by that suppose there are two compactifications so uh, we have we have x over here and here we have this inclusion i from x hat uh, i from x to x hat now suppose there is a j yeah from uh, x to t such that we have the following properties t is compact to j of x contained in t is open 3 t minus j of x is just one point so let's call that point p infinity over here or let's call the q naught this one point q naught and uh, okay 4 j from x to x j of x is a homeomorphism so in this case t is another compact space which is obtained by adding one point to it is another compact topological space and uh, t minus j of x is just this one point and j and x is embedded inside t as an open subset. So then by our previous proposition there is this map f. So we may write uh, t as j of x disjoint union this point q naught and we may write x hat as i of x disjoint union this p naught. Right. So, by our construction definition of the map f, we have this map f. Right. So, here it is uh, i compose j inverse, it is a bijection and here it takes there is just one point outside j of x and that is sent to p naught right that is by definition right. So, this implies that clearly f is a bijective map and by the previous result by the previous proposition f is continuous. right moreover uh, using the result as t is compact is compact and x hat is host of uh, we get that f is a homeomorphism right uh, so here we have used the result use the following result so f from x to y is a bijective continuous map where x is compact and y is host of right so then f is a homeomorphism right so uh, let me make a remark it is important that y should be host of important that y is host of right which is an assumption uh, throughout in the rest of this course unless it is stated explicitly that 
a space may not be Hausdorff because otherwise we can take the identity map from x to x right and give this x the trivial topology. Right. For instance, we can take x to be S n. So, here we can give x the usual topology and here we can give x the trivial topology. Right. The identity map is obviously going to be continuous because here the target has the trivial topology right. and but obviously this map is not Hausdorff even obviously this map is not uh, a homeomorphism uh, even though x is compact. Uh, so, before we so before we proceed, let us remark that uh, there is an important class of spaces. which is not locally compact. Right. Many of the spaces we have encountered in this course, they are all uh, subsets of uh, Rn and Rn is locally compact and many of the spaces we will examples we have seen in this course are locally compact. Yeah, But uh, there is a big collection of spaces which is not locally compact. So, namely the infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces. Right. So, let us see why this is as an application of what we have learned, let us see why this is not uh, locally compact. So, if x is locally compact, So, if you do not know what uh, Hilbert spaces are, you can just forget about this example. So, then there is an R positive such that the open ball, the closure of this ball around of radius R around the origin, this those x in x says that the norm of x is less than equal to R is compact. Uh, but this is not possible. Now, this is a compact metric. If this is compact, then this would be a compact metric space, and therefore every sequence would have a convergent subsequence. But this is not possible as the sequence. So, we can take these vectors Eis, the Eis form a orthonormal basis for the Hilbert space Rei. Uh, does not have a convergence of sequence. Okay. Yeah. So this contradicts our the result we proved that every compact the result we proved that every in a compact metric space every sequence has a convergence of sequence. So, this brings us to an end uh, of our discussion on locally compact topological spaces. So, next we want to describe what the quotient topology is. So, let us begin with a very uh, an example from group theory which you would be familiar with. So, let G be a group 
or rather a concept from group theory and let n contain g be a normal subgroup. Right. So, then we have the first we have the set g mod n which is the set of equivalence classes uh, g mod equivalence where we define x x comma y x is defined equivalent to y x and y are in g uh, if and if y inverse x is in this normal subgroup. Right. So, instead of writing g mod equivalence, we often write g mod n. Yeah. Uh, so, moreover, uh, we can give g mod n or g mod equivalence, whichever way you want to write it, a group structure such that the natural map So, let us call this pi. This is just a map of sets a priori to g mod equivalence, which takes an element x to its equivalence class. So, in this case, the equivalence class is the coset of n. So, this natural map, so we can give g mod n a group structure such that this natural map becomes a group homomorphism. That is one thing. Further, so that is one nice thing which happens when n is a normal subgroup, but there is another nice thing with, which happens. This map pi has the following property. If we have a group homomorphism, which is constant on equivalence classes. Right. So, then we get an induced map of sets uh, g. So, we have g to h, we have f and f is constant on equivalence classes. So, which means when we look at g mod equivalence, we get a map of sets, uh, let us call it f bar and the important thing is that f bar from g mod n to h is a group homomorphism. Okay. Uh, note that since f is a group homomorphism, f is constant on equivalence classes. If and only if the normal subgroup n is contained in the kernel of f. So, in the next lecture, we will see an analog of this concept for topological spaces. Okay, so, before we end this lecture, let us see one uh, very standard application of this corollary that we saw of the uniqueness of one point compactification. Uh, so, let x be equal to r n. Right. So, then x is not compact and x is locally compact. So, uh, now we know that, so recall the stereographic projection right. So, what did we do? We had R n 
and we took the sphere and we deleted the north pole for instance right p and for any point x on the sphere we joined p with x and we get a unique point y so the stereographic projection phi is from sn minus the north pole p to rn right and we had seen that phi is a homeomorphism right in particular if we let t to be sn and j to be equal to the inverse of this homeomorphism so j is phi inverse from rn to sn right so then uh, the hypothesis of the previous corollary of this corollary yeah of the above corollary are satisfied right because we are taking t to be sn sn minus the image of the geographic projection is just the no one point the north pole and this will imply that this will force that uh, the map from the induced map f that we get from sn to x hat is a homeomorphism right thus the one point compactification So we will end this lecture here.